Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to improve our math skill. From day number 81, we began talking about, we began discussing the notion of ratio and proportions. Today we're going to continue continue that topic. We're going to do a few problems dealing with the niche, with, uh, ratio and, ratios and proportions. The first problem that you see on the blackboard deals with the concept of ratio. The problem, as I said, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it. We are told that the ratio of boys to girls in the class is 3 to 5. The ratio of boys to girls is 3 to 5. The question is, which of the following could be the number of students in the class? Which of the following could be the number of students in the class? And what I left out here inadvertently, what I left out here is that they tell you to select select one or more answer choices. Select one or more. This question, this type of question, this type of question appears in the GRE. It doesn't appear in the SAT or TEs or GMAT, but this type of question does appear on the GRE where they give you a question and there are more than one answer choices, more than one correct answer choices, and our job is to make sure that we check mark every one of them. So if they give you eight answer choices and three of them are actually correct answer choices, and if you only mark two, you won't get any credit for it. Also, if you end up mark marking something that is not actually a correct answer, then of course, and you get the idea. Let's, let's take a look at it. We are told the ratio of boys to girls, boys to girls, we are told is three to five, which means the total parts, total parts are eight. Eight is the total parts, which means, which tells us that the total number of students, whatever it is, total number of students, whatever it is in the class, must be divisible by eight. I think I just gave the game away. I forgot to remind you to pause the video. Still, it's not too late. Pause the video. Always, always pause the video and make sure you do the problem yourself first. So the total number of students, whatever it is, must be divisible by 8. Let's take a look at the answer choices. 16, of course, is very straightforward. 16 is divisible by 8, so that's, that's the correct answer. 20, 20 is not divisible by 8. If you were to divide that, 16 has to a six, the 20 has 2 8s, 2 8s are 16, and then we will have a remainder of 4. A remainder of 4 is to be divided by 8, is to be divided by 8, we end up at 2 and a half. The nature of this nature of the question is such that nature of the question is such that whatever numbers that we get have to be integers, they have to be whole numbers because we're dealing with boys to girls. There are some problems where the nature of the problem is such that it has to be only integers. When you're talking about ratios of boys to girls, ratios of blue cars or red cars, ratios of daffodils to roses, ratios of students to teachers, they have to be whole numbers. We cannot have fractions, you cannot have decimals. 20 is not possible. 20 is not possible. We can't divide 20 by 8. How about 72? 72 is possible. 72, of course, is only 8 less than 80. 80 divided by 8 is 10, therefore 72 divided by 8 is going to be 9. It is divisible. 88 is clearly divisible by 8. We can divide 88 by 8 is 11, so that is also correct. How about 96? Let's take a look at 96. I wonder if 96 is divisible by 8. 96, if you were to divide it by 8, how many 8 does 9 have? How many 8 does 9 have? 9 has 1 8. 9 has 1 8. The remaining one goes and joins the 6 and becomes 16. The remaining one goes and joins the 6 and becomes 16. And 16 has 2 8. In other words, 96 divided by 8 is 12. 96 is in fact divisible by 12 divisible by 8, we just found it here, that is also a possibility. And of course, of course, 96 divided by 8 would have to be 12, would have to be 12 because 96, 96 is simply 80 plus 16. 80 plus 16, and of course we know that 80 divided by 8 is 10, and 16 divided by 8 is 2, 10 plus 2 is 12, that's what we got here. How about 112? I wonder, I wonder if 112 is divisible by 8. 112. How many 8 does 1 have? 1 has no 8s. 1 has no 8. That one goes and joins the, the next one and becomes 11. How many 8 does 11 have? 11 has 11 has 1 8. 11 has 1 8. The remaining 3 goes and joins the 2 becomes 32. The remaining 3 goes and joins the 2 and becomes 32. 
and 32 has 4 8's. So 112 turns out is also divisible by 8, that is also possible. How about 210? 210 divided by 8, how many 8 does 2 have? 2 has no 8's. The 2 goes and joins the 1 becomes 21. The 2 goes and joins the 1 becomes 21. 21 has 2 8's. 2 8's are 16. 2 8's are 16. When you take away 16, when we take away 16 from 16 from 21, we get 5. That 5 goes and joins the 0 becomes 50. And 50 is not divisible by 8. How many 8 does 50 have? 50 has 4 8's. 50 has 4 8's. 4 8's are 48. You must know your time timetables. 4 8's are 48. We had a 50, which means we have a remainder of 2, which is to be divided by 8, which means it's going to be 24 and a quarter. 24 and a quarter. Very difficult to have a quarter of a child, or half a child, or three quarter of a child in the class. It becomes a nuisance. That's not possible. That is not possible. B was not possible. How about 396? Let's take a look at 396. Now, in my notes here, I have 26 and 1 quarter. Why did I say 24? Did I make a mistake? 21 has 2 8's. 2 8's are 16. Remaining 5 goes and joins the 0, becomes 50. And there are 6. Yes, there are 6. There are 6 8's. 6 8's are 48. 6 8's are 48. And the remaining 2 is divided to be 8. It is 26 and 2 8's, which is 26 and a quarter. But still, it doesn't change the fact that 210 is not divisible by 8. 210, it is not possible to have 210 children in the class given the fact that the ratio of boys to girls is 3 to 5. It's not possible to have 210. Let's, let's take a look at 396. 396. How many 8 does 3 have? 3 has no 8s. That, that 3 goes and joins the 9 becomes 39. 39 has 4 8. 4 8s are 32. 4 8s are 32. The remaining 7 goes and joins the 6 and becomes 76. 76. And 76 has 9 8s. 9 8s are 72. We had 76, which means we have a remainder of 4. That 4 is to be divided by 8. We end up with 4 8s, which is the same as 49 and a half. It is not possible. We cannot have 396 kids. So the correct answer among the 8 answer choices that are given are, correct answer choices are A, A, C, D. Why do I have D one more time here? I do not know my alphabets. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. So E is correct answer. F is correct. G was not correct. And H was not correct. So we have A, C, D, E, and F. A, C, D, E, and F. That's what I have here. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. In the new questions that we have is, we are told that the ratio of boys to girl is 3 to 4. It is 3 to 4. The question is, which of the following could which of the following could, could not, which of the following could not be the number of students in the class and here are the answer choices. This is the new question. The ratio of boys to girls in the class is 3 to 4. The question is which of the following could not, could not be the number of students in the class and here are the answer choices. 21, 39, 77, 84 and 91. A, B, C, D, and E. Here they're simply asking us which of the following could not be the total number of students in the class, which means they're giving us five answer choices, which means that out of the five, four of them are possible numbers. We could have the number of students to be any one of these four numbers except one. One will not work, and our job is to locate that one that cannot be the number of students in the class. Do it yourself first as always and then resume the video and then compare your work, okay?
All right, let's start from the bottom. Let's make it interesting. Let's start from the bottom. Is it possible to have 91 students in the class given the fact that we have the ratio of 3 to 4? Since the ratio is 3 to 4, the total number of parts that we have is 7. There are 7 parts total. This number has to be divisible by 7. Total number of students has to be divisible by 7 given the fact that the ratio is 3 to 4. Is this number 91? Is 91 divisible by 7? Let's find out, shall we? Let's find out. How many 7 does 9 have? 9 has 1 7. 9 has 1 7. The remaining 2 goes and joins the 1 and becomes 21. And 21 has 3 7. So that is possible. Turns out that 91 is simply 7 times 13. Notice, notice that is one of the most common numbers people miss when they are, when they are asked to, lo to locate, when they are asked to list all the prime numbers, when they are asked to locate all the prime numbers from 1 through 100. 91 is the one that a lot of the people, a lot of the time people end up missing because they are doing it cursorily. Hastily, we learned this word yesterday. Is 84 possible? It is, is, it, is it possible to have 84 students in the class? Let's find out. Is, in other words, is 84 divisible by 7? Let's find out. 8 has 1 7. The remaining one is going to go and join the 4 becomes 14 and 14 has 2 7s. So that is also possible. It is simply 12 times 7. 77 of course is clearly possible. 77 is divisible by 7. It's 11 times 7. How about, and 21 is possible. 21 is simply 3 times 7. So the answer must be this. 39 is not divisible by 7. 39 is not divisible by 7. If we were to divide, if we were to divide 39, what would we get? 39 divided by 7. How many 7s does 39 have? 39 has 5 7s. Seven. 5 7s seven are 35. 5 7s are 35. We don't have 35. We have 39. We have a remainder of 4. Remainder of 4. That 4 is to be divided by 7. Very difficult. Very annoying to have 5 and 4 7th of a child in the class. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.